Ready? Okay. I would like to continue the, the arguments, the, the, the discussion of yesterday. And uh, today I will start with um, the quantum is in chain or quantum is in modular more than one dimension. Um, I will briefly describe some of the f main features of uh, the um, uh, quantum transition. Okay. Then uh, we'll guess, essentially, using arguments based on universality, which are the arguments uh, used, uh, I mean, uh, which I introduced yesterday using very simple model, which is the um, one-dimensional in chain, classical in chain. I will discuss uh, quantum in chain. And uh, to, to derive a theory, an effective theory, which should describe the, qu the quantum criti critical behavior, and uh, arguing also that uh, this the same theory describes also the classical critical uh, behavior in one more dimension. And then uh, we will introduce, uh, after we have a theory, you know, we have to do some calculations if you want to compare with experiments. And uh, calculations are usually done when we study critical phenomena in the framework of normalization group theory. So we introduce a number of schemes and uh, we will try to do some calculation in one of them. Okay, that's the, 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 the summary of the, the lecture, two hours today. Let me start from, so, quantum is in chain. A few um, important things about quantum criticality applied to the quantum is in chain, which is the prototype of the models undergoing quantum transitions. So quantum is in chain is uh, quantum Hamiltonian, this is just the energy scale, J, we have, uh, we write it in terms of Pauli matrices, sigma x, here the sum is, uh, well, e or we are for example, let, let me consider a chain, okay, so the sum is over i, Okay, then we have a transfer, transverse field, usually the coupling, about all the coupling related to the transverse field is uh, called the J, G. J is the same energy scale, so just we have a unique energy scale. And this is a transverse, so it involves the, the other um, Pauli matrix, sigma x. I don't know if I used the same notation yesterday. Uh, likely yesterday I used sigma z and sigma x. Of course, this is just a matter of rotation or definition. Okay. And, and then one may introduce, if you want, another, uh, another external field which is uh, kind of, which is coupled to sigma x. Okay. This is uh, the easy chain. Okay. Yesterday we argued using arguments based on extension of the results we obtained for the one the 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 one di the one dimensional classical model and the zero dimension quantum model uh, we argued that this is equivalent i mean i mean that's uh, using quantum to classical mapping or the classical to quantum mapping the, the other case this must be equivalent in a sense to the two dimensional easy model okay now everything was easy when we consider a one-dimensional classical model and compared it with the zero-dimensional quantum model. But uh, we increase the dimension, the, 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 the model, uh, the system is more complicated. So when we apply this quantum to classical mapping, we should be more careful. Okay? Anyway, we will see that this a natural place, natural region of parameters of this theory where this mapping can be done using essentially universality arguments. And uh, this mapping provides uh, arguments, I mean, uh, to, to expect that the quantum critical behavior of this theory is in the same universality class of the classical critical behavior of a two-dimensional easy model. Okay? That's 
So let, let's focus on this model. Okay, this is easy chain, one dimensional easy chain. What happens if, uh, let me, add, let me co consider this, uh, let me mean neglect this uh, external field for a while. Okay, so we have, uh, J is a scale, okay? It could be any scale. Let me consider what happens if you I we vary this uh, parameter of G, okay? If G is equal, or if G is large, hmm, okay, you can easily see that this term is dominating, okay? So we expect that the ground state of the theory is essentially given by product so the ground state is essentially given by product of i of spin up in terms of a z basis of sigma z basis okay do you agree that's very simple so g is going to infinity the hamiltonian is decoupled completely no, you can neglect it. so this is when g is large what happens when G is small? So, let's say G going to zero. G equal to zero, you can put G equal to zero there. So you don't have any more this term, okay? You have only this. And uh, you can easily check that the ground state, you can easily convince yourself that the ground state of this theory is degenerate, in this case, okay? You have two ground states, essentially. One of them is given uh, by the product of, okay, of these states. Okay, these states are eigenstates of sigma x, okay? Or you can take the product of this, hmm? okay? Th is the notation clear to everybody? Otherwise, you ask, no problem. So, we have a generation, hmm? two states. Actually, th these are very different, these two behaviors, at least from, from the point of view of the properties of the ground state. These two hmm, behaviors are very different, okay? Actually, they extend to final values G. So this means that this phase, okay, this situation can be extended to large G but finite. So it's a not singular limit of G going to infinity, and that's what I'm saying. And this situation here, with the degeneration of the ground state, can be extended also to finite G, small but finite. Clearly, these two, I mean, these two behaviors, okay, are very different. And so we expect that there is some, there must be a point in which, uh, non analytical point with respect to the properties uh, of the properties of the ground state, in which the proper, these properties here change, and uh, we observe this, a degeneration, a vice versa. Okay? That's uh, quite natural. Let's assume that there is one point. So we, there is one point, only one point on analyticity. Okay, in which the ground state properties are changing. And this is what happens, because this model can be solved exactly. You can find the solution in any textbook. Okay. So what happens is that there is uh, a point which is, uh, in this case, for this particular model, has value of 1. Okay. And this is a critical, critical point in which we pass from a situation of this type to a situation of this type. Okay, what happens at this critical point? Let me call this quantum critical point because uh, we are, the model is, qu uh, this, this is a quantum model. I'm only talking about ground state. I'm not talking about temperature. There is then a temperature. So if you want, this uh, can be considered as the zero temperature limit of a uh, standard uh, system. I mean, actually this can be, people uh, have done experiments uh, on some models uh, which uh, can be represented by this simple, uh, okay, is in chain. Okay, now what happens here? If you 
if you study and study the solution of this model, uh, you find that uh, uh, there is uh, the gap, I mean, the difference between the two, um, the two lowest energies, the difference between the energy of the two lowest states, mm, when we approach from here, for example, from the, this is can be considered as a disordered phase, I mean, because it looks like a disorder phase, high temperature disorder phase uh, in the standard transition, and this can be considered as an ordered phase in which we have a degeneration of the ground state. Okay? So it's symmetry breaking. So if you, we come from here, we can define the difference between uh, the two lowest states, and the difference between the two lowest states, okay, goes to zero. Okay. Actually, there is another important point. When we approach this point, we can also consider uh, the special behavior, I mean the correlation function, and the behavior with respect to the distance of the correlation function. And we find that there is a correlation. Okay. Usually, this correlation is finite in this phase, but when, when we approach the critical point, this correlation tends to become uh, tend to diverge. So we have. Uh, that uh, the correlation length of the, the special, I'm talking about space, not time, space correlation length, is diverging when we approach this point. Okay? So, if you, I mean, I'm talking about the, the correlation function associated with the ground status. Hmm? And this goes like, uh, in this case, G minus G critical minus one. Okay? This is what uh, the exact solution gives. I was the, the reason wa why I, I have not written anything here for the gap is because the gap is usually characterized by the behavior with respect to this divergent correlation length. And one finds that the gap is going to zero like usually one puts here a new exponent. This is dynamic exponent. In this case, in this particular case, if you check the solution, you find that this z is equal to 1. Usually here you have uh, an exponent. This exponent is called the nu, and in this particular case, nu is equal to 1. Okay? That's what happens. Hmm? So, close to this point, we have a divergence of both. I mean, we have a gap which is suppressed which is going to zero, okay? Gap is defined as the difference between the energy of the two lowest states. And the correlation length, as which uh, characterizes the behavior of the correlation function in the ground state is going to diverge, like this, okay? So, this is called quantum transition because uh, here everything is driven by quantum fluctuations. We don't have a thermal fluctuations in this case. Okay? Now, what general, what, what, what we can study there? What's the, 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 the physical questions that we can make hmm, around this point? Okay? Well, the idea is that uh, is we may ask questions on the behavior, on the response functions at this critical point. In particular, we may ask questions related to lo the low energy properties of this, uh, of the model around the critical point, okay? What I mean for low energy properties? I mean, uh, uh, well, wha one may introduce a temperature, for example, okay? but. Uh, when I say low, low, low energy properties, uh, the temperature must be very low. So I may study what happens, the temperature dependence when the temperature is very low, okay? And very low here means very low with respect to the scale of the system. So, for example, that's uh, the questions I may ask. I may ask questions concerning the correlation function. Okay? Which distance? Well, the distance, for example, which are related to 
to the diverging scale. So, for example, this scale here, Xi. And this scale here is much larger than the lattice spacing, which uh, here I put equal to 1. Here the lattice spacing is equal to 1. I forgot to tell you that. Okay? I'm assuming that's equal to 1. So, Xi, okay, when I say that when I say that the correlation length is large means with respect to one in this case or if you want with respect to lattice space. So I may ask questions concerning the physics at this long distance. I may also consider, I mean, frequency. Okay? Well, I can study the, the, the time dependence, take the Fourier transform, and study the frequency. Okay? And the frequency, of course, must be of the order of uh, the gap. At the gap, I know that it's much smaller than J because close to the critical point, delta is going to zero. So there is a region in which delta is much smaller than the typical ener macroscopic energy from the model. Okay. It's a typical uh, questions which can we can ask, which are interesting, and uh, they are studied by the by the um, people stu studying quantum transition, essentially. A nice book in which all these things can be di are discussed, the book by Subi such that on quantum transition. Let me, I think that's the title is uh, Introduction on Quantum Transition. The author is this one. Okay, you can find uh, many things. Yeah. Well, I, T is of order than delta. Okay, that's an interesting range. Yeah, you can have a, you can have a, here usually what you have, you have a tower of stations of a, a difference uh, with this difference. The difference is of order of delta. But this can be solved because uh, the this in chain can be diagonalized. Well, you should be careful in, in the way you define it, because when you do quantum, when you have a quantum model, okay, you have a real time, and you define suitability somehow. I mean, uh, but if you, for example, if you measure the mm, um, the time ordered correlation function in the Euclidean space, then you find that it's the same as I showed you before. In the critical point, they they have the same the same universal critical behavior, okay? But you have to define the correct quantity. Okay, so that's what you can ask. Now, I want to, we want to study the leading behavior in this limit when we study small temperature, when delta is very small because we are close to the critical point, okay. when uh, omega is sufficiently small and x is large, okay, compared uh, so the order of the correlation length. So we want to study that. Formally, the asymptotical the asymptotic critic the asymptotic behavior the leading behavior can be obtained by performing this um, um, by performing a formal limit which is this one let's send a zero or if you want if you prefer to write down a cutoff in the end in the, in the moment in, in the momentum space let's send lambda to infinity okay or uh, well uh, I mean, this is essentially the, l the other, I mean, you can, you can imagine a, a formal limit in which you send J to infinity, the energy scale, the macroscopic energy scale to infinity. Okay, what you study? Well, you study, okay, the response, the correlation function of the model, okay, in terms of ratios of this quantity, which are low energy quantities. So you are, you have a, a situation in which you can distinguish between high energy physics, which is non-universal. I mean, what happens to the very excited states? Well, depends on the model, okay? You cannot do an effective theory about that. You have to solve the model, okay? But uh, the idea is to try to get an effective theory for the low energy models, low energy um, properties, related to the ground states, close to the ground states, when the temperature is small, 
okay? So there is a, a kind of decoupling between this. Uh, and this is, this is possible only when we are close to the critical point, because only in this region, delta is small, okay? The gap is small, and the correlation to length is large. Only in this limit, we can neglect the macroscopic details of the model, okay? Only in this limit, we can form take this limit, a to zero, okay? Because we can, for example, imagine in order to get, we are here, we are in the limit psi very large, we keep fixed A, because if you want to do an experiment using condensed matter systems, you have to keep A fixed. You cannot reduce to zero A. But you can tune the model, for example, by tuning this parameter here, and get the correlation length larger and larger. Okay? This can be done. But you can see this process in a different, from a different, different point of view. Instead of sending psi to infinity, okay, you send a to zero, because what's what matter is the ratio. If you do that, uh, okay, you have a continuum limit. If you have a continuum limit, you can hope to describe this, uh, this uh, the, the what happens at the critical point in terms of a quantum field theory, because the quantum field theory is defined in the continuum, at least formally. Mm? Okay. Now we. What we should do now is try to guess, using universality arguments, uh, the quantum to classical mappings, try to guess what's the right theory for this. Quantum field theory. Talk about quantum field theory. Okay? Let's try to guess. It. Now, first, the first thing we can, uh, you can use is uh, the idea that uh, if we have uh, uh, quantum model, mm, okay, we can map it into a classical model in which the temperature is just the size of the Euclidean, the, for the new Euclidean dimension, okay? So the idea is that this model here, which has a symmetry zeta 2, should be mapped in a classical model, okay, defined here it's a special distance, defined on a slab, mm, okay? where this farther dimension we are I'm adding is nothing but 1 over t, okay? Of course, this derivation can be done better, okay? But I'm trying to give you the main ideas, okay? Then you can find the books and read the discussion, okay? Uh, of course, cannot be derived as actually as we did, uh, I mean, many, we did many calculations in zero dimension, but if we are, things are becoming more complicated, okay? So. The idea is that, in a way, the corresponding model, corresponding quantum field theory, should be defined in uh, a slab. Okay, this can be considered as uh, the temporal dimension in Euclidean space, and this is spatial dimension. Okay. Uh, well, we are close to a critical point, so we have we are in the case in which this uh, correlation, the, the correlation length here along the space, is diverging. Okay, and uh, we need also uh, a theory in which a goes to zero. So formally, also this length scale should be diverging. Okay, do we have a model? Okay, for that, a classical uh, critical behavior, cl a classical universality class, which can describe something like that. T keep into account that uh, we have a symmetry which is set two, and we want to preserve the symmetry. Of course, yes, we have a model, and the model at the critical, it's the easing, uh, the two-dimensional is universality class, okay? So we can try to use a theory, the same theory, okay, with little uh, difference, the same theory which we use in to study the classical easing model in two, three dimensions. Here, the number of dimensions now are irrelevant, because these arguments, the arguments I'm giving now, I mean, are the same arguments you can use if you want to study not a, a chain, but uh, a square lattice, a quantum square lattice model, okay? Then, uh, usually, I think you have already seen the, the theory describing, uh, the theory describing uh, uh, the easy universality class is just a five to the four theory. I mean, 
So if you want, if you want to give an expression for the partition function, I mean an effective expression for the partition function, this can be done in t terms of uh, a path integral. I mean it's a functional integral, okay, in which we introduce uh, as we you can do in the case of a classical model, you introduce a kind of coarse grained quantity, which is a field now. This field is uh, just a real number. You don't need it to be discrete. So this is a functional integral. And here you put a kind of action or a Hamiltonian, it depends on how you want to call it, I mean, to weight the configurations. And this S should be done should be an integral over the space, okay, and an integral over the time, the time along the Euclidean, that's the Euclidean time, and the, the integral over the space, it's over all volumes, in particular it could be infinite, while this on tau is from zero, since we want it on a slab, to one over t. And here we have the phi to the four theory, so, Okay, because we know, uh, I don't have time to show you, but we know that this provides good description. Actually, we will see some calculation later. Good description of the classical easy universality class in one more dimension. Okay, so we have an effective theory. Now the point, how to compute these uh, critical exponents? I mean, how to compute the properties, critical properties? The idea is that we can compute them Using this theory, using quantum field theory, it's much simpler, I mean, at least it's much simpler when the system become, becomes complicated. For example, it's much simpler if you want to study the easy model more in, one, in one more dimension, in three dimensions, for example. Okay? That's the idea. The questions, because then we will try, I will try to, I want to present some ideas on the way we perform calculations and on the framework of normalization group theory which allows us, which provides us the framework to perform calculations, real cal quantitative calculations. Okay. This is our general idea, of course. Most of them can be extended to more general systems. So the idea that the phi to the four model, uh, which is uh, I call in the first lecture I call it Landau, Gisborg, Wilson effective model, I mean, can be used not only for the easy model, but for example for uh, models with a symmetry of n. In that case, we get uh, the n vector model, which is which provides an infinite number of universal classes, which are interesting to the their they are observed in the nature. I mean, the realization of this critical behavior is observed in experiments. But we can have also, and uh, I showed you in, uh, in the slides, I mean, if you remember, other theories, more complicated in theories in which the five to the four theory has more than one copy, for example, here. Okay, this is the simplest one, okay? Now we focus on, uh, uh, on this. Yeah. The? We can have um, some situation, extreme situations, if uh, we are close to a first order transition, but we are not talking about first order transition. Concerning continuous transition, if I say I know, I know a case in which Z is equal to two. I think that uh, you can have other, I mean, uh, but uh, I don't know uh, complicated cases. Uh, the case of Ising is Z is equal to one. When you have a CFT theory, describe the critical behavior, it means that Z is equal to one, essentially, I mean. Positive, I think it should be positive, otherwise that's, uh, <laughs> that I, mm, I don't know models in which Z is going to zero. I mean. 
questions? Because in the, now we pass to we switch to uh, another argument, which is the idea of aromatization group theory. The aromatization group um, transformations, essentially, which uh, provide a framework to describe all these phenomena. As you can see now, I will discuss aromatization group theory from um, for classical transitions. But uh, I hope that I convince you that uh, the description, uh, I mean, an effective description of a classical transition provides us information also for quantum transition using the classical, the classical to quantum or the quantum to classical matrix. Okay. Okay. So let me <laughs> a first idea on the romanization group transformation comes from the Kadan of blocking steps. Uh, no analytical calculation can be done for interesting model, at least for. Uh, using the Kadan of blocking um, approach, but uh, they are very useful to understand. I mean, so this uh, framework is very useful to understand. Actually, let me also say that the romanization group transformation, there are infinite schemes, okay, in which you perform romanization group transformations. Uh, we will consider two of them, but you can use an infinite number of schemes, okay? I will try to give you the general idea. So let me, in order to, g to get the general idea, let me go back to the simple classical IEC model in one dimension, which is the simplest model. There you can do anything. Let's say, uh, okay, this is the IEC model. At this level here, the Hamiltonian, the classical Hamiltonian, this is a classical, okay, classical chain. The Hamiltonian can be written as, uh, well, I don't remember, without as a K sum S E S C plus one. And here there was also something like this, okay? Where S I, S I is a variable, classical variable, it takes value minus one, one is a simple one, okay? Now, this Hamiltonian describes this theory, if we consider it, this is uh, the original lattice variable, I mean, the, the degrees of freedom of the model, okay? What about considering a couple of them as, a, as an object, I mean, to provide, the, to use, to extract some information from this couple and uh, construct a model here, an effective Hamiltonian, okay, for this uh, new degrees of freedom, okay? So we have, uh, in a sense, we are Extracting from this block, okay, something which provides the, r the the necessary information. For example, the useful information if you want to study the long distance behavior, what can be, what do you do, okay? Since we want to study the system at very large distance, say we have this small distance. Well, we take the average of the two. This could be, or we can do that. We take the average and we integrate with respect to the other value. Okay, so one is called decimation, the other one is called, so there are different, many different schemes, but the idea is to extract something, okay? So we have a, a new variable here, and then we construct an effective Hamiltonian, okay, for these new variables. Hmm? If this effective Hamiltonian could be written in, in uh, as a, a similar, hmm? So we have in this new degrees of freedom, okay, let me call them bar. If this is a similar structure, hmm, okay, if we find that there is a similar structure for the Hamiltonian, okay, the flow, I mean, there is a flow, a transformation between K on K prime of the parameters, okay? If we do that again and again, this way we can define a flow on the variables on the parameters, the model parameters, okay? The meaning of this flow is that what are the effective parameters, okay, which describe the theory, describe the effective interaction between these block variables, okay? In some case, as in the case of uh, around the critical point, 
the structure of the Hamiltonian remains more or less the same. Okay? I mean, the relevant quantity, the relevant pieces, relevant terms are the same. Of course, if you, if you do calculation exactly, you find uh, also uh, nest to nearest neighbor interaction and so on. But what, what happens is that there is a, a pattern of this type. I mean, the relevant quantities look the same look similar, okay? We take into account them and we define a flow. We define a flow and we have, uh, we look to um, the fixed points, we look at uh, this flow. At the fixed points of this flow, all the necessary information, necessary information of the critical behavior. That's the idea, okay? And this is implemented in several different cases. In particular, if you want, I can leave you as exercise if you want. If you want to implement this idea in the case of uh, the simplest model, which is the classical easing chain, since Z is equal to, it's, it's written, do you remember? We wrote this in terms of the transfer matrix. We wrote this as uh, M, this number of sites. We wrote this as a trace, or do you remember? We can write this as a trace that's that's a stupid uh, no okay, but now we can interpret this t one t two square as the contribution coming from two sides, okay, and uh, we may read the new variables the new parameters k prime and u prime from this square. So that's a very simple and just in this case. In the other case, uh, the exact calculation are practically impossible. Okay? This, this scheme is, uh, has been used numerically for some, for some time, the 80s and the 90s. Then, in order to get the critical exponents, uh, better techniques was used uh, essentially based on financial scaling, which is a different technique. Okay? That's the idea. If you want to do the calculation, you can do that. We have already, we have already uh, done the most of the calculation. You have to take all the expressions derived yesterday, I mean, for the model, and then uh, read it. Uh, okay, you can find it. The, cal the, the calculation, this, this kind of calculation can be found, I think that's in the book by Atlan Simons, which is a nice book on condensed matter physics. Okay. Okay. We want to, in order to derive uh, um, some expression from the critical exponents in the case of the easy model uh, of the phi to the fourth theory, we will consider a different scheme. But this is the idea, I mean, actually what uh, it was in the, um, the main ideas in the 60s, uh, which led to the theory of uh, uh, the Wilson theory, okay? So let me go to the phi to the fourth theory. I think that if you want to, uh, if you want an interval, I mean, uh, you want to a break, we can do it now, 10 minutes, and then we will continue and finish. Because this is the right point, because then I will discuss. Last lecture will be on the RG theory, the way we compute it, uh, exponents uh, in uh, phi to the four theory. Okay? If there are questions, I'm here.
l'altro io per andare tipo domani mi chiedevo ma quanto sarà il nuovo sabato sarà il sabato della pantocciera Okay. Now we want to study we want to study the normalization group transformations of a theory in a theory like this uh, described by this Lagrangian. Well, we may consider, for example, a vector here, if you want. Mm. So the fundamental field is just a vector, real n real components. This is an n vector model. We are in the Euclidean space. Uh, well, that's the phi to the four model. Mm. Okay, and we want to study the the critical properties. Because we, from the previous lecture, okay, we argued that uh, the, the critical properties of the, the quantum critical properties of uh, uh, EC model, quantum EC model in two dimensions, for example, should be described by the phi to the whole model in three dimensions, one more dimension. Okay? So we want to do, we want to study the critical properties coming from this. And this can be done by using. Um, the normalization group framework. I mean, so we have to define a normalization group transformation. Okay. Now, how to define that? Um, as a first thing, since the theory is interacting, okay, we need, you know, that uh, we should renormalize the theory. Okay. So we need a 
So we need to define, in order to define it here, we need a cutoff. So we have lambda. We consider a momentum cutoff. So when you do perturbation theory, instead of integrating over all momenta, okay, you integrate up to some scale lambda. Okay? That's the momentum cutoff. So as a as a first step, I mean to define a normalization group transformation, we consider we, we write down the, fi the, the, the field. Let me, let me write down for, in for a just a real scalar field, okay? Not any component, but just an, but that's the same. We write down phi, okay, the, the field phi, as a sum of small and large components, okay? So you do the Fourier transform of phi, okay? F the components, the momentum components, Okay, that's a Fourier transform. Eh? The the components, okay, the components corresponding to k smaller than lambda, smaller than um, let's say lam lambda over b goes here. Determine this. Uh, part here of the field, okay? Those in between lambda over b and lambda goes here, okay? Determine this. It's is it clear? Okay, the definition. So in particular, if you have a Gaussian theory, you can easily see that these two there's a Gaussian theory is uh, diagonal in, uh, in terms of uh, the momenta. So these two terms decouple. But we don't have a Gaussian theory. We are considering uh, a nonlinear interaction, which is given by the phi to the four theory. We want to keep into account that. So we do that, okay? Okay, so that, okay, corresponding to this rescaling, we have to rescale also the momenta, okay, corresponding to this rescaling, lambda prime goes like B, lambda over B, it becomes lambda again back. Okay, as a result, we start from a theory at the cutoff lambda, okay, and we get an effective theory at the cutoff lambda, okay. So the couple, this couple of transformations leave the cutoff invariant, unchanged, okay? The only difference is that we are considering a different, different theory. So how to implement this? Okay, this can be done in perturbation theory, for example. Let me, let me see. Are there questions? This, this couple of transformations are called normalization group transformations in this scheme, this particular scheme. This, uh, as I said before, there are an infinite number of schemes, okay? This is one scheme. Actually, this is uh, the original scheme used in the 70s, uh, used by Wilson, uh, Fisher, and other people in the 70s to produce, to perform the first calculation, quantum field theory, the, the first field theory calculations, leading to the Epsilon expansion, and which uh, allowed uh, 
Wilson to get a, pri a Nobel Prize. Okay? So let me do this. Let me sketch this calculation. Actually, if some of you wants to do the exam, can uh, do the calculation details, the all details of this calculation, uh, can write all the details of this calculation, and this uh, can send that to me, uh, this is equivalent to the exam. Okay? I cannot, I cannot do all the calculations in details. I will uh, just show you the, the most important points. I will discuss the most important points. Okay? Okay. So, first step. Let's focus on the first step, okay, which is more complicated from a te technical point of view. Okay, we have to integrate with respect to these fields. What does it mean? Okay, we have uh, we have uh, this uh, we have this. Okay, now we write S. Instead of phi, we put the its sum, the sum of the two components, and we integrate over this uh, large momentum, large momentum components. Okay, how to do that? L okay, we write this. Uh, this. This is the effective. I define this as the effective action corresponding to the low momenta to the low momentum modes. So this uh, is a function of lower phi. And this is obtained by performing the integration, the functional integration, over the other fields of what? E to minus S phi. OK? That's the definition. I perform this uh, calculation. If I know how to do that exactly, I can exactly get this uh, action, effective action for the l for the low momentum modes. Okay, taking logarithm of the result. That's uh, so. In order to do the calculation, just to sketch it, we take S in the original uh, action, and we write it. We write it in, in terms of. Uh, the two fields. So we have uh, okay. Then we have uh, You can easily show that the, the terms uh, which are missing here, which are the linear, I mean, uh, the product of, for example, here, phi smaller, phi larger, okay, don't, don't give any contribution. Just because of the theory, for the Gaussian theory, they decouple, okay? They integrate to zero, I mean, uh, because of the parity, essentially, okay? We have this, this nonlinear term. Here, there is a mixing, okay? So there is a coupling between the two. Of course, I mean the nonlinear coupling, okay, we have introduced, we have in the action, okay, gives couplings between the low momenta and the high momenta. That's a standard. Mm? The low momentum components and uh, high momentum components. Mm? Okay, we have to do this calculation. So we, we can write down, uh, so we have, um, S minus log of that integ integral. Okay. This uh, the log of that integral. Okay, is equal to a is equal to. You see, these terms are 
don't include phi to the, phi lar the, the large component of phi, so we have an, an analogous term okay I mean so if you want I can write now this way okay and this is uh, come here then there is uh, the integration, the well, the other one is min plus or minus log the integral. Here there is a Gaussian term. If you have plus the coupling. integrated over space. Are you following me? Or oh, I lost you. Okay. You see, there is... I have to do this, okay? S some of these terms depends only on small phi, okay? And then they are here. Essentially, they provide a Gaussian action, okay? Some of them depends only on phi larger, which is the Gaussian part, okay, of C come from the Gaussian part of C phi. The problem is here, and this here, okay? Let's now, this can be also written in this form. So we have uh, uh, We can write this uh, we can write this term here as a uh, log minus now I will explain Okay. Should be uh, okay. Should be correct. Now, what what uh, what I'm isolating? I'm dividing by the integral with respect to the Gaussian action here, and I'm multiplying. So you can easily check that that expression can be written in terms of log Gaussian. Okay. But this is a constant. This does not. This quantity does not depend on on uh, smaller phi. So that's uh, an irrelevant constant. We can neglect it. Okay. The only problem is here. Here we have the expectation value of this quantity here, average on an ensemble which is Gaussian. Okay. with respect to this, okay? Yeah. In this, in this perturbation theory, of course, you can have all, all terms here, but those which are power Odd powers of uh, phi less times phi large, which is this one. Okay, if you integrate with respect to this. Well, actually, all, all, all terms could be considered in one the perturbation theory. So essentially, here what happens is you get uh, even powers of phi larger and phi smaller. So you get phi square, phi square. You don't get uh, any old term. All the old terms can be shown to be, to vanish. If I, I don't know if this was... Uh, 
But anyway, all other terms are irrelevant in all this. Anyway, you can check. I mean, uh, okay, why not should do this calculation? Now, how to do this calculation? The only way we know, okay, at this stage is to perform an, uh, a perturbative expansion. Okay, to do this calculation in perturbation theory. Perturbation theory means that we are assuming that u is small. So if u is small, okay, we can expand the exponential here, okay, and perform the Gaussian integration, integration, okay, of the expansion. Okay, that's the idea, and that was uh, this the, the calculations, the original calculation. You can find the books, I think, in the book by Ma, uh, Critical Phenomena, but many other books, um, even book by such find integrated. If you do it by yourself, I mean, uh, you write it. This is uh, for me. It's a good. Uh, it's a good. Um, I mean, uh, uh, it's a good for the for exam. If you need to do exam, okay. Okay. Now, I. The idea is to expand this uh, to per to perform the calculation at the first order of u. Okay. If you, we do that, okay, I won't do that. But the calculation is uh, relatively simple. It's just a calculation on the few first few. Feynman diagrams uh, coming from a fight report theory. I assume that every one of you have seen Feynman diagrams in the case of fight report theory. So if you do this calculation, what If you do the calculation, you write what, uh, what you obtain is something like this, this left as exercise. You'd get, and this is equivalent, uh, I mean, this is equivalent to the, um, to the original one. Actually, I'm only write down the first order in the one loop contribution, the one loop calculation not second order calculation, okay? Then, uh, then you attain a term which is proportional to the square of phi, but the with a new coupling, I will write down the coupling now, the effective coupling, and obtain a, a term proportional to the phi to the four with a new coupling, plus, plus I order terms, but this, uh, let's assume that they are related. Okay, actually, if you do the calculation, be careful because you can also obtain some derivative terms. Okay, because uh, if you have some apparently non-local terms, you have to approximate them as a local terms using kind of uh, derivative, derivative expansion, OPE expansion, whatever you. Okay, you will find, uh, if you do the calculation in some details, you see. This is the result, essentially, plus terms which can we can be neglected. What about this? Hmm? R prime, of course, is equal to R. R prime is equal to R, because R was the old one, plus something which is plus uh, this is the result of the calculation. Uh, let me here there is uh, uh, a further parameter which is irrelevant, 1 plus A. This is uh, the result. This comes from, uh, essentially, this is the contribution coming from this diagram, the Tadwell diagram. It's order U, instead, in fact, you have only one integration. Okay? What about the U prime? U prime you get Sorry? Cut off dependence. Uh, okay, I, you are right. I skipped one, uh, one, uh, one expression. This is uh, this is not our prime. You are right. I copied another formula from the. Let's see. Uh,
that's an expression I wanted to write. Okay. That's a, that's a, you can. This is the the tall pole. Okay. Sorry, I copied the the wrong formula. What about you? The calculation you a little bit more complicated. Instead of the tall pole, you have to consider the next order. Okay. And uh, this is uh, this is this uh, diagram here. And uh, the result here, let me try the u prime is equal to u minus uh, u square. Here there must be 3 over 2. And here the integral is uh, the integral on the shell, okay, on the momentum shell of 1 over k square. Okay? That's the result of this uh, integration. There are other terms here. Yeah, I'm neglecting all other terms. I'm restricting myself only to terms of this uh, form. Then one should complete the discussion showing that, uh, arguing at least, that all other terms are irrelevant in order to compute the critical behavior. Yeah, in this case, I'm already taking the uh, because I have non-local terms in the in the expansion. I, I would have uh, x prime, and then uh, what I what I did to get this, what people did to get this, is assume that x, the contribution, uh, the essential contribution, come from x equal to x prime plus derivative terms. Well, not local. We are assuming that uh, it's uh, that's of course this is. Um, I mean, it's uh, not, not it's not rigorous. I mean, you assume that, and then you show at the end that they are irrelevant. That's what you can get. That's a framework. I mean, uh, we are constructing the framework. You do a kind of operator product expansion of the cup. Okay, assuming that uh, only the first few terms. Of course, the point the point here. I mean, uh, what's uh, the important point, which is um, quite delicate, is that uh, you have uh, different distance, but uh, you are translating in terms of operator product expansion, so an expansion around one point. The convergence of the expansion around one point is not guaranteed. But uh, you are assuming that, you go on, get the results, and then uh, compare. Okay? Uh, this at Okay? So, let me, uh, now what happens? We want to consider the flow. If you want to consider the flow, we can consider B as uh, close to 1. I mean, one can, actually one can write down B as exponential. Uh, I mean, uh, let, let me take B as a 1 plus uh, a small quantity which I call DL, and I study the flow of these variables in terms of uh, blocking close to 1. Okay? That's what I do. If I do that, actually before doing that, I forgot the second step of the Ramazesho group transformation, which is that we have to rescale back to the original, to re to the original, uh, um, to the original cutoff. Okay, this is the result. I mean, that's just the result of integration. This is the first step of our, this first step of our RG, RG transformation. Okay, there is a second step. The second step tells us that we have to rescale the lens, to rescale the momenta, in order to bring the cutoff back to the original value. Okay, this is the second step. And this is quite, uh, this is very easy, because in order to do that, we have just multiply. We have to look at the, uh, the dimension, length dimensions of uh, the various quantity we have introduced. And uh, so the new coupling, okay, after rescaling, since the, this R as the dimension of an energy square, okay, should go like B square, the coupling, the old coupling. So let me, I don't want you to get lost. What I want to do is to 
define a new x, okay? Rescaling with respect to b, b is a, a, is a quantity which has the, um, it's a length, essentially. That's a, like, like it's equivalent to the blocking, I mean, the size of the block, okay? So we rescale this way so that the, the cutoff goes back to its initial value. But we have to rescale all the other quantities because they are dimensionful. So this quantity here, if you check the dimension, the, in, the, 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 the simple dimension of this quantity here, is energy square, so it should scale this way. Okay? You have also to scale the field, yeah. You have also to rescale the field because the field has a dimension. But for the point of view of the parameters, so you need only to rescale the parameters. If you want, if you want, if you want, you need to, at the moment there is no contribution because I'm in one loop, but there is a, I have to rescale because this, the rescaling uh, is this one. Okay, but since we are focusing on the quantity RU, I, I was not considering that. If I want to compute eta, the, the exponent eta, then I have to do that. But this, uh, you need to do two loop calculations to that. To one loop, there is no any contribution, so let me skip it. So you check that this is the, the, trust the, the, the scaling coming implied by that rescaling, the scaling of the spatial dimension. And uh, you, also you should be rescaled. And if you check the physical dimension, the dimension of you is D minus four. So the rescaling of this quantity is B four minus d no d d i call the no, d well i call it d small or the largest the same quantity okay oh, okay four minus d u u prime r prime okay this is the farther quantity so if you take this we go from r to r prime integrating uh, over a shell and then we rescale to tilde r, tilde u, okay? And this is the rg transformation, okay? Associated with the blocking b, with the blocking variable b. Okay, this is the definition of this scheme. Now we want to study the flow, okay, of the couplings, this rg transformation. Okay? That's the, that's the definition of rg step. The idea here, I'm repeating, is to maintain uh, the cutoff constant, okay? So this transformation is done keeping the, con the cutoff constant. If you don't like the cutoff, you can imagine keeping the lattice spacing constant. That's equivalent, okay? So we have to combine this. Let me also consider the case in which B is closed. Okay, combining these two transformations with close to one, we get some. So I'm writing B here as one plus DL. DL is small. Okay, I'm trying to use notations which are uh, more or less standard for for people di who did this calculation. Okay, DR of DL keeping the cutoff constant, so we are studying the flow, okay, keeping the cutoff constant because this is what we have done when we consider these two transformations. And if you do the calculation, okay, explicitly, you get 2R plus U uh, over 2. Here there is a, this, uh, this, is, this is the area I mean, uh, of uh, the sphere in d dimension. Okay, that's a parameter. That's an irrelevant for us. One plus r, and this. Okay. So, my suggestion is to derive this. That's very easy. Okay, that's uh, just two. Two minutes. Okay. And the other one is d uh, u over d. L computed the keeping the cutoff 
constant is equal to 4 minus d u. And here there is uh, 3 over 2 u squared sd 1 plus r. Okay? These are the differential equation describing the flow. Is it readable? Okay? I think that you can find this calculation in the book by Satchler. Done in this way, if I'm not uh, wrong. Okay? Just if you want to get, uh, you want to know a book where uh, this calculation is done. Or, I mean, uh, in the old book by Ma or in the reviews by Fisher, Wilson, okay. That's the old style. I mean, it's this calculation. Nobody now, uh, nobody now does calculation this way because after one, two loops, you are lost. You need to do other schemes. This theory has been computed up to six loops, but not using this scheme. Okay? But if you want to understand what you are doing, I think you should. Uh, okay. The physical idea behind uh, you know, that's your group framework. I mean, that's, uh, I think this is the best one. Okay? Best way. So, now, I as you can see, this equation is uh, quite complicated. Uh, these uh, equations uh, are perturbative with respect to u, but I, I didn't say anything respect concerning the dimension of the theory. Okay? I just suppose that uh, you can do some kind of perturbative calculation. Okay? But nobody guarantees that this uh, perturbative calculation is meaningful. Unless, okay, you stay close to four dimensions. Now we will see why. Close to four dimensions, I mean, we introduce a parameter which is small, usually called the epsilon. That's epsilon expansion. That gives rise to the epsilon expansion. Epsilon is four minus d. Okay? In this case, we can control the perturbative calculation, and we will see now why. Uh, okay. Okay, it's correct. If we assume that epsilon is small, okay, then we can study, more easily study, the fixed points of this theory, of this flow. Before doing that, let me go back to these equations. Okay, these are equations are the equations under randomization group. Okay, important points of this quantity here are the so-called fixed points. Because fixed points, it's a point in which uh, I mean uh, you run. And so they are attractors of your uh, dynamics. If you, if you call what you want to see this, uh, these equations are kind of dynamic. They are attractor of your dynamics. Okay. They could be attractor, they could be also non-attractor, I mean, uh, that's uh, the, oppos the opposite of attractor. I, do, uh, I don't remember, you. okay? So we want to study the fixed points. The fixed points of uh, this, uh, as a necessary condition to have a stable fixed point, I mean, uh, all fixed points are those in which the right part, the right side of this equation is zero, so that the equation, the derivative is zero. Okay, that's our fixed points. So we have to solve this and these two equations. Okay, if we solve them using epsilon expansion, the idea that epsilon is small, we can solve them perturbatively because as you can see we have this epsilon here. So we have two main fixed points which solve the equation. One is uh, the trivial one, trivial gash one, in which Okay, you can check that this is a solution of the two equations. Okay, you see? And the other one, there is a non-trivial solution now, okay, which is given by, uh, well, actually, I don't remember what it can be easily, okay, you should solve this, that equation. R, R star is equal to minus epsilon so we are considering uh, should be six, and uh, u star is equal 
uh, well, it's a constant c times epsilon. I'm not sure about this constant. I got okay. Probably the constant here is two over three. S4, S4 is the area of the first sphere, okay, in four dimension. Okay, uh, this is not irrelevant. Uh, uh, the cost. Okay. These are two fixed points. Now we want to understand this, what happens to the flow. Okay, let's assume that we start from here. This is the Gaussian fixed point, and uh, we try to understand what happens. Okay, so we write down the, the trajectories the romanization group trajectories. This is the fixed point associated with the, the new fixed point. This is called Wilson Fisher fixed point. Okay? Wilson Fisher fixed point. Now what happens if you start from here close to the Gaussian point, you can check that the trajectory goes away. If you they goes away from here. But if you are get the right lines, okay, you can reach this Wilson Fisher fixed point. This is a general, if you solve those equations, you get these general features. But we want to understand them quantitatively. In order to understand them quantitatively, the best thing to do is to expand your uh, equations around the fixed points. Because the, the fixed points are really the important quantity. Here, okay, if you reach the Wilson Fisher fixed point from some directions, you go there. But uh, if you, you make a mistake in your direction, a small mistake, you go away. Or you go away. Okay? Now we understand this, uh, this feature of this fixed point. On the other hand, if you are here, okay, there is any, anything to do. You go away. There is no a, a good direction to stay at the Gaussian fixed point. At least if we stay within, or we consider uh, number, number of dimensions smaller than four. Okay? How many of you have seen this? Uh, many. Okay? Okay. So in order to understand what happens, the best thing to do is to then linearize the equations around these fixed points. This way we are studying the flow, okay, of the theory around these fixed points, okay. These fixed points are important, I mean, also because they are the points in which this, the, this, this are, uh, these are also called the beta functions, uh, or Riemann-Dirac group functions associated with these parameters, okay. So, the idea is to take this uh, fixed point and <coughs> linearize around the two fixed points. We have two fixed points now. now. Let's do that with respect to this. So the idea is instead of using R, using this rescaled variable. OK? I write down the equation with respect to rescale quantity. OK? Keeping only the linear terms. R what is what's R for you? R what is? If you uh, if you do the calculation, the scheme, I mean, R C the critical value of R is not zero because you have a cutoff. When you have a cutoff, uh, only in dimensional regularization R is zero, R critical is zero. At yeah, yeah. All right, you can see. Of course, the critical exponents cannot depend. The all universal features don't depend on the scheme. All the rest depend on the scheme. Okay, that's the point. So let let me uh, write the equation.
Now, Gershon fixed point here and here Wilson Fish. The equation around the Gershon fixed point becomes Let me write it this way. Here we have a matrix, okay? In the case of the Gaussian fixed point, we have two here, and here should be um, four minus uh, what's the coefficient? I, I can sell it. Okay. This is the result around the If you check your equation at the Gaussian fixed point, at the Gaussian fixed point, they decouple, I mean, only in the first order is important, okay? This is the Gaussian fixed point. The Gaussian fixed point is characterized by having u equal to zero. So the Gaussian fixed point is where you don't have nonlinearities. Okay? Then what happens here? We can do the same. Look, del delta R here and delta R here is defined differently, I mean, because R star is different. Okay? I'm using this defi defi that definition for both fixed points. In this case, the results here, if you want, this is uh, uh, epsilon. Okay? 4 minus d. In this case, we have 2 minus, uh, I have the results in terms of n, I will translate, epsilon over 3, hope that this is correct, but I'm sure, minus epsilon here, and here something like 1 over 2, plus order epsilon, uh, it's, a three. it's epsilon, I think so. And this is zero. And this is the result in the case of the Wilson Fisher fixed point. That's the, the structure. Okay? Let's see this. Let's first discuss this uh, behavior here. Okay? What happens here? Uh, well, we are close to the Gaussian fixed point. We understand if we, we get closer or we go away. Okay? This equation is already sufficient to understand that. Let's assume that we are closer, okay? Now, if, what happens to R, to this perturbation, okay? We are closer, but you see, the eigenvalue here is two, okay? If you solve this, this equation, you get an exponential running far, going away from the fixed point. So this means that the parameter R okay, is relevant. Actually, the parameter R, okay, probably we have seen the first, um, I don't know if uh, my first lecture I, I mentioned it, the parameter R is uh, essentially T, I mean, could be related to the temperature. Therefore, delta R is related to T minus Tc, okay, can be interpreted. In when you have a thermal transition, you can interpret it in terms of uh, the reduced temperature, okay? What happens to you, okay? But well, what happens to you depends on the dimension. If epsilon is positive, okay, then u is a relevant quantity as r, okay? So let's assume that you are you have r equal to zero. You are already there at the critical point. Okay. You, you have only u as a free parameter. What happens? Close to the fixed point, you go away. So the Gaussian fixed point is unstable with respect to both r and u. And epsilon is, uh, is larger than zero. Epsilon is larger than zero when d is smaller than four. When d is larger than four, u becomes stable. It's irrelevant because this becomes negative. Okay? Irrelevant means that uh, if you vary u, okay, under Rg transformation, you get to the point back. Okay? 
and uh, as a necessary condition, you need that this is uh, negative. Okay. Now, let's see the Wilson Fisher fixed point. So we understood that at the Gaia fixed point, let's consider the case of d smaller than four. Okay, it's better. Okay, d larger than four is not. Uh, I mean, cannot be done in experiments. Okay, so d equal to three, for example. Both of them are relevant, okay? So if you add a nonlinearity to the theory, okay, you perturb the theory, okay? And uh, asymptotic behavior is completely different. You can be very small, but you wait a little bit, a little more, and you get a trajectory which is far away from the Gaussian fixed point. The Gaussian fixed point is unstable with respect to any value of u. Okay. Now let's see what happens here. This is the new point. Okay. In this new point, the, the fixed point has a nonlinearity. You see? Okay. Uh, here it's convenient to de diagonalize this, uh, this, uh, this matrix. That's trivial. Can be diagonalized, for example, as taking uh, as a new as a new parameter delta r delta u, a combination. For example, one can define delta r plus, uh, I don't remember the coefficient. Okay, a, f a factor, something like this, I mean with the c, is a, c is a constant, which can be determined by diagonalizing this matrix. Hmm? And the other one, since the matrix is, uh, is a triangular, the other one should be just delta u, okay? So you introduce two new, you change the basis, that can be done. If you change basis, you have two eigenvalues here. You get the eigenvalue associated with the la with W1 is uh, uh, two minus epsilon over three, and the other one is minus epsilon, or actually are the diagonal. And lambda two is equal to minus epsilon. Okay, these are the eigenvalues associated with these two. Again, we see that W1, okay, which is the quantity in a way related to the temperature, mm, if you want to consider an instant transition down by the thermal fluctuations, is relevant because this is number is larger than one. So you need to tune the temperature if you want to see the critical behavior. Okay, but that's a standard. If you want to see, a, if you want to see the liquid vapor transition, you have to change the temperature. Okay, you have to tune the temperature. And this is uh, just uh, the physical, I mean, in, in physical language, this is uh, just the mathematical language, what I said in the physical language, that you have to change the temperature to, find the, to, to get the critical point. But what about the other one, delta u? For any d smaller than four, this is negative. So u, okay, delta u at least, Okay, at the will sufficient fixed point is irrelevant. You can put there any value. You get always the same asymptotic behavior. Okay, so it's relevant at the Gaussian fixed point, but irrelevant at the Wilson Fisher fixed point. So if you introduce u, okay, you perturb the system so that the Gaussian, the, the asymptotic behavior is not anymore Gaussian. But if you change u, once you have uh, one final value of u, okay, but you change it, you don't change the asymptotic behavior, the, the universal features of the asymptotic behavior, okay? That's uh, the lesson we have from this, um, s from this equation. Okay, a question, because I need only five minutes and uh, close. I have five minutes? Okay, I have five minutes. Question for this? Yeah, usually the uni usually when you linearize the transition group equation, you have to change the basis. No. Yeah. yeah. Of course, you have to combine them. Yeah. But w the point is that you you start from a value of u. It's a bare quantity. Okay. So 
you, you, you determine the, the critical point. Of course, the critical point, the critical temperature depends on you because the critical temperature is not a universal. Okay? You determine to see. You stay there, and then you find that the synthetic behavior does not depend on you, on the starting point. Okay? So be careful. Now, last relations, and I close my little course, my brief course on this. Now, the things I'm going to say are very general. They can be generalized to most critical behavior, critical phenomena observed. I want to get, do you remember, I think that uh, I wrote some slides on the, uh, on the scaling, on, on the scaling behavior of the, the free energy. Okay? One can write down some homogeneous scaling equations, okay, for the free energy in terms of a blocking variable. Okay? We want to arrive at that. Okay? I want to show you that this is equivalent to what I have said. And thus blocking, those, those homogeneous equations are just a sum summary of uh, all this procedure. So let me, let me introduce the free energy, free energy density. Okay? We are considering a phi to the 4 model. I mean, an easy model, if you want. Okay? This depends on the model parameters. The model parameters are R, which could be the temperature. They could depend on an external field, magnetic field. I didn't consider a magnetic field, but you can also extend the calculation to a magnetic field. Calculation, okay? You can, uh, the, the, uh, the RG transformation of the magnetic field. I didn't do that, but you can do also that. And the other point is U, okay? That's a simple mo system. We have only a few parameters. And this is the phi to the fourth here, okay? This is the free energy. Actually, uh, we may also consider, instead of R, let's take the, the expansion delta R. I mean, it's the, the, the first term of the, 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 the difference from some fixed point values. Okay. That's equivalent. We have a changing variable. Don't, we have not done anything. Okay. This is, uh, by definition, is uh, minus 1 over V the log of the partition function for a system in a volume V, okay? Then you can take the volume to infinity, okay? Minority to the, to the final transformation, let's have V, so the volume of the system, okay? Okay? That's the free energy density. Now, when we have done this uh, this RG transformations, okay. We have integrated uh, some uh, some of the degrees of freedom, but the partition function, okay, of uh, the initial partition function and the partition function of the low momentum fields, low momentum components, is the same, because we have only integrated the large momentum fields. So this uh, RG transformation, okay, maintains constant maintains the partition function constant. So in a sense, that's equal to the partition function of the low momentum fields, okay? Or if you want, of the blocking variable. Do you remember? When, when we consider the easy model, okay, instead of taking this as a starting point, we have integrated, taking only the block variables. If we compute the partition function of the block variable, it must, it must obtain the same results, unless we do some approximation, okay? Okay? That's the equation. Now we can use this equation, because we know that th this, these two partition functions are the same. By definition, 
okay, since we have integrated the, def the functional integral. Hmm? Okay, if you, this, this, this means that uh, we integrate first on the large momentum components and then on the low momentum components. In this case, we integrate over all components. That's the same, okay? Of course, one performs some approximation, okay? There are some irrelevant concepts, but let me consider this, uh, this uh, relation. So let's go back to the free energy density because that's the, qu the relevant quantity. So this is uh, minus one over V, log ZV. This can be written as, as uh, is equal to minus one over V prime. Let me assume that we use a blocking B, okay? And here we have uh, log Z V prime. We write it delta R prime, delta H prime, delta U prime, okay? Instead of using ZB, I'm using ZB prime. V prime is V over B D, okay? Is the volume computed in terms of blocking variables. Okay? That's a quite trivial, uh, I mean. Once you use this, I'm just replacing. Okay? Then what, uh, what, what have? So I have the free energy. Let me conclude. The, the free energy depends on R, H, and U. And this is equal to B to minus D times this one. My inf since we got the same kind of Hamiltonian, this one is the same free energy computed for different values of U, H, and R. So we get the same free energy computed for delta R prime, delta H prime, delta U prime. Okay? But now, B to minus D, F, delta R prime is a function of delta R. Okay, assuming that the, the, the transformation is diagonal, can, could be diagonal, but this is just a detail. Okay, so this is B to These are some powers, okay? We computed them in the epsilon expansion now, okay? These are powers, these are called the critical exponents. This is the inverse of nu. This is uh, a function of eta. This is uh, the romanization group dimension of u, okay? And this is the homogeneous law with the right. Okay, there are also some regular part here, but they can be neglected. And this is the homogeneous function, the homogeneous equation, uh, which you can generalize all this, um, case which summarize the, the critical behavior, which is written in terms of these exponents. Now, when, why u is negative, okay, if you increase the blocking, this argument here is going to zero. Okay? And this means that this is irrelevant. All the leading behavior is given by the quantity which has positive RG dimension, which is this, the temperature, the external field. Only two relevant fields in the fight of the fourth year. No more than that. Okay? This is uh, one over new. In the R case, in the epsilon expansion, you can compute nu, okay? Nu is the correlation length to exponent. Why this correlation length to exponent? Usually nu is defined as uh, the diverging over the correlation length, okay? When delta R, the even perturbation goes to zero, the correlation length goes to nu. In order to see that very easily, you can, for example, consider the case, since this is arbitrary, Since this is arbitrary, you can take some particular value of B. For example, you can take the value which B, Y T, B, Y, T, 
delta r is equal to 1, okay? Then you have b in terms of delta r, okay? But b is a length scale because it's the blocking length scale. So it can be related to this, okay? There are better ways to show it, but uh, in two minutes, this is the best I can do for you, okay? And that's close everything, so, I mean, this shows that the equation, that the RG steps, the RG transformation, the RG equations we derived, we solved within the Epsilon expansion can be, implies the homogeneous uh, scaling law of the free energy. And also if you want the homogeneous scaling law, so the correlation functions and so on. Okay? Okay, I think that we'll stop here. That's enough. If you have questions. Maybe you are too tired to have questions. There is time, I have five minutes at least. Yeah. B going to zero. To ah, this one. Well, this means that uh, this is relevant. This, in that case, the relevant uh, is called dangerous. This relevant operator perturbation is called dangerous, and then you have to to treat it. it could change. No, yeah. Okay, they could change, so. That's a general uh, scenario, I mean, okay? I gave you the general features, but of course there are many cases in which some of these assumptions, okay, don't work. So we have to be careful. Don't generalize to all kind of uh, systems. Okay, this is a general theory. I mean, I try to give you the, a feeling of, uh, I mean, of the general ideas Okay, which allows us to study this critical phenomenon, in both thermal transitions, classical transitions, and quantum transitions. But uh, be careful. There are many things, many other things to know. Okay, that's a first uh, introduction. That's an introduction.